On April 15, 2021, LaMarcus Aldridge shockingly announced his retirement, at the age of 35. It was very surprising because he could still play. Even after getting traded to the Nets, it was clear he still had a lot of game left. But if you know his history of heart problems, this really should not come as a surprise. Multiple times throughout his 15-year career, Aldridge had instances of irregular heartbeats. He's diagnosed with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, which can cause a rapid heartbeat at random times. This is a condition called heart arrhythmia, and we've seen it pop up every few years with him. The scary thing is, it would happen randomly. One minute he'll be fine, the next minute he'll struggle to breathe. He was forced to sit out a lot of games because of it. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today we're gonna take a detailed look at LaMarcus Aldridge, a perennial all-star, but how good was he actually? How was he perceived from fans and other players? Was he a true superstar? Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. But hey, if you like the content, drop a sub or a like, and thank you so much for the support. Coming into the NBA, Aldridge joined the Blazers at a time when they were rebuilding. But fortunately, they made some very smart trades. On draft night of 06, they acquired the number 2 pick to take Aldridge, but also had the number 6 pick to draft Brandon Roy. A year later, in 07, they got super lucky in the lottery and was blessed with the number one pick, in which they took Greg Oden. In hindsight, it looked like a bad pick, but it was widely known that Oden was going first back then. Within two years, the Blazers acquired the three cornerstones of their franchise. The three guys who would lift the team out of mediocrity, develop together, and make a run for the title. Or, so we thought. Injuries absolutely demolished Roy and Odin, which left Aldridge all by himself. On the bright side, it might have been a good thing for him. Up until Damian Lillard got drafted, Aldridge was the lone star on the squad. He got more opportunities now and he developed into an all-star, a consistent 20 point per game threat. One of the biggest criticisms of Aldridge prior to the draft was that he was, quote, soft. Although that label was kinda unwarranted. I prefer the term big man with finesse. That was him. Early on, he was not that physical. He didn't like pounding other players down low. He didn't like that brute force, that bruising style of play that fans expect out of a big man. For that reason, he didn't want to play center for a long time, despite his coaches encouraging him to do it. When Aldridge would score on you, it was due to his footwork and his smooth turnaround jump shot, not by ramming his shoulder into your chest. Draft writer Aaron Smith said this about him on his scouting report prior to the draft. Scouts still have some question marks about his toughness inside. He is vastly improved in that area, but still struggles against the big and strong players on the NCAA level. Not a physically imposing player inside, plays more a finesse game. That was quite accurate for his NBA career too. Over time, Aldridge continued to play this style, preferring to play outside the paint than inside. But this slowly drew some criticism. Now, we all know Aldridge liked shooting mid-range shots in Portland, maybe a little too much. We all knew he liked taking fadeaways and turnarounds, but the truth is, those are the least efficient shots in the game. Bear in mind, Aldridge, well, he was still hitting them at an above average rate. For example, from 2008 to 2015, Aldridge hit 41% of his shots between 10 and 16 feet, and 42% from 16 feet to the three-point line. For a mid-range jumper, those are good percentages, but overall, it's not very good, and he took too many of them. That's also why his true shooting percentage and his effective field goal percentage were all pretty mediocre for a guy of his size. His efficiency was actually below average for his position. His preference for taking jump shots also hurt other areas of his game, like his free throw rate. The most free throw attempts he averaged in any season of his career was only around 5 per game. For a 6'11 guy averaging over 20 points a game, that's pretty bad. Because Aldridge didn't like playing down low, he didn't draw as many fouls. One of the biggest strengths of a post-dominant player is to draw fouls on the opponent's big men, 
but Aldridge was missing out on that advantage. This was the most common criticism of his game, just his unwillingness to play down low. Although his shot release was very helpful to his game. He had a very high release point and combined with his height, it was nearly impossible to block him. Similar to someone like Dirk Nowitzki, who also has a super high release. At times, it felt like Aldridge was settling too much for the jumpers. With the addition of Damian Lillard, the Blazers continued to make the playoffs, year after year, although with Aldridge as the main guy, they never really got that far. While Dame and LaMarcus packed a furious two-man punch, it wasn't all sunshines and roses. In fact, their relationship was… well, according to most reports, they never really had a relationship. It was kinda weird. According to Sam Amick, he wrote an interesting perspective on Aldridge during his time in Portland. For years, the rumblings that Aldridge wasn't happy with his place in the Portland spotlight were always there. First, it was Brandon Roy stealing his thunder, then Greg Oden before his ill-fated fall. And then, this young and dynamic talent named Damian Lillard whose star rose far too quickly for Aldridge's liking. He routinely turned down interviews or didn't maximize off-court opportunities of which Lillard would take full advantage. He is known as the private type, the kind of player and person who prefers to play his game, and let someone else handle the lion's share of the leadership duties. Except, of course, until someone does just that, reaps the benefits of it, and kickstarts the cycle of jealousy that had everything to do with his departure. Those were some strong words there. Granted, we don't know the exact circumstances that went on behind the scenes, and I'm not sure if all of this is true. However, after Aldridge left the team to sign with the Spurs, Lillard was asked about their relationship, and he admitted, I wish it was more like a brotherhood, but it wasn't his personality to reach out. As a younger player, I came into the league wishing and thinking he was going to take me under his wing, like his little bro. I had confidence in myself, but I wanted Aldridge to be like, man, let's go eat. You are going to be good, you are going to be an all-star. I wanted him to talk to me like that, but he didn't. Anyway, in San Antonio, Aldridge revitalized his NBA career. I mean, it's not like he was getting worse, but he adapted into a new system, and accepted his new role at center. Over the years, he also put on an extraordinary amount of muscle. Once known as a lanky guy, Aldridge became incredibly strong. In 9 years, he put on over 40 pounds of muscle. By his later years, he was known as one of the strongest players in the league. In San Antonio, he started taking more shots at the basket, he was more willing to play closer to the basket, and bought into the game plan. Even so, there were still some mishaps, there were some years when Aldridge felt uncomfortable, and trade rumors were common to hear. Him and Kawhi were probably not the best fit together, especially personality-wise. Neither of them took charge. As a result, Aldridge struggled in multiple playoff runs, and got heavily criticized for it. Overall, he still had arguably his best years in San Antonio though, especially around 2018 to 2019. It was around this time where he displayed the most complete package we've ever seen. Offensively, he still had that smooth jump shot, and all the finesse back in Portland, but he did not just settle for jumpers. He also mixed in a dominant presence in the paint. Because he was a lot stronger than he used to be, he was fine playing against centers, and he dominated them. Defensively, he was much improved, and actually made a name for himself as one of the best defenders in the paint. Even back in Portland, his defense was very overlooked, despite being very good at positioning his body. Honestly, he probably should have made at least one all-defensive team at some point. So, how good was LaMarcus Aldridge, actually? He was pretty damn good. At his peak, he was a top 3 power forward in the league, although if we rank him all time, he's still a huge step below the more notable names. Of course, he was nowhere near as dominant as guys like Dirk, or Duncan, or KG. But Aldridge was still a perennial all-star in a hyper-competitive conference. He was never the most athletic or the most flashy guy, but he made use of the skills he had a fluid offensive player who adapted his game over time, and became a dominant inside presence later in his career. 
Aldridge finished with seven All-Star selections and five All-NBA nominations, with almost 20,000 total points. Unfortunately, the championship has always eluded him. His best chance at the title was either in 2017 if Kawhi did not get hurt, or in 2021 with the Nets. Unfortunately, he couldn't stay around long enough to be with them. As for the question of if he was really a quote superstar, I would say no. He was an all-star, but to be a superstar, you have to have, you know, some level of changing the game. And a certain level of fame and notoriety that most NBA players do not get. Aldridge, while most people know him if you're an NBA fan, he didn't really have a huge cultural reach. Among his peers, he was well respected. After he announced his retirement, there was a flood of players paying their respects. His number 12 jersey will, without question, be retired in Portland. Anyway, that's all folks. Let me know your thoughts on LaMarcus Aldridge. Where would you rank him among power forwards of all time? It's a pretty stacked list, but I'd say he might squeeze into the top 20. Maybe. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.